What's up, Internet? Welcome back to the Xenoblade Chronicles 2 Blade Showcase, and we're going back to Torn of the Golden Country, looking at Team Hugo. Hugo is an amazing team overall, just because it fixes the problem that I had with tanking in core Xenoblade Chronicles 2. You might have noticed, if you think back to your first time playing this game, if you ever tried your hand at tanking with Tora, you might have found it very, very sluggish. The cooldowns took a very long time, and there would be little to no payoff, because your healer or your attacker would be generating more aggro than you ever could. I always found that, in my opinion, the best way to tank in Korra's Enderly Chronicles 2 is just to get a crit heal on a very fast attacker-type character, and that would usually get the job done. Thankfully, however, Hugo completely fixes all the problems I have with tanking, and makes it that much more accessible thanks to his talent art, Imperial Tether. Imperial Tether is really cool because it does two very important things. While it does work as a team taunt, or as a uh, an AoE taunts, it does sacrifice your HP. This is actually very beneficial because the way that it works with Aegeon and Bridget, his two blades, is that they'll sometimes do bonus damage with certain abilities based on having 30% or lower HP, or by having all aggro on them, or at least having the targets targeting them as well. So pretty much you can stand to benefit most of the time. I highly recommend spamming this as much as you can in between your auto attacks as it helps you generate your specials that much faster so what I would recommend is you would do it at the beginning of a fight and right before you switch to one of your blades do that again and then do your switch that way you'll keep all the aggro and enjoy all the effects of the aggro attack the other thing I want to point out is his shield bash shield bash is the most reliable form of topple in uh, Horn of the Golden Country, and this is really, really good because you don't have to switch out to anyone in order to get this, and it's very useful in conjunction with Laura and Adam, since they both come with the break and launch respectively. Guard shifts work exactly the same as it does with Tora or all the other guard-type abilities, in that when you're being attacked while this is happening, you will be able to recharge. It's really, really easy to charge up your arts in this game, and honestly, when you're constantly switching between people, you don't have to worry too much about cooldowns. More than anything, you'll use this for damage mitigation. And then Round Cutter is just a nice little piece of filler. You would use this one to help generate your specials while also generating a tiny bit of aggro. When you switch him in, he is going to be the sort of smash for the team, but you're not likely going to be using it as often. However, because he does come with the Shield Bash, you can follow it up with either Adam or by switching into a Geon, who comes with a launch. In terms of the accessories, there's a bunch of different things you can do, like usual. I've decided to stick with the Earth elements since I've kind of gotten used to it at this point, but feel free to switch it out to whatever element you feel like you're missing for your chain attack setups. The burst symbol is pretty important uh, considering that Hugo is really good at leading the team and keeping your entire team alive while you're trying to build as many orbs as you can. We're going to be fighting against Hurricane Anise for this one, and it's really, really easy to keep everyone alive, even though she is a very, very powerful boss overall. So yeah, Burst Symbol is just kind of to capitalize on our chain attacks. And Crystal Earrings, this is a really broken item, I love this. Uh, basically, it worked kind of like the Affinity Charts from Xenoblade Chronicles 2, where you get more party gauge upon scoring excellence. It's really, really easy to do, and honestly, you won't need any form of pouch items that increase party gauge gains once you have this. You just need it on one person, and you're basically good to go. In terms of the other two characters, I haven't really changed much. I've given Laura the Wind Elements because Wind is going to be very important for orb breaking because I've given Jin the Elemental Orb Ender. I've given uh, her and Adam the same items, Abyss Mask and Ice Headband. This is just to increase their overall damage output. We don't even need to worry about crit heal since Haze is a fairly good healer and Hugo is an amazing tank, so we don't have to worry about it at all. Now, going over the blade, so, surprise, surprise, Aegeon finally makes his appearance, and this, in the same way as Bridget and Mithra, the specials that he had in Xenoblade Chronicles 2 are going to be arts in this game, and they're fairly decent at whatever it is that they do. So, Water Moon increases aggro drawn, and it's a really, really quick one. I recommend having this be the very first arts that you cancel to help build up your specials, since it's very, very quick, unlike the other two things that he has. Breaking Wave has extremely long animations, but you will be evading the entire duration of it, which is very, very good. And then Midnight Mist is a very slow ability as well, but hits multiple times, so yeah, feel free to use that one if you um, just activate the taunt with Hugo, switch into a Geon, and then do this for extra damage to a single target. Counter Wave, it's a little bit difficult to kind of play around with this one, just due to the fact that you do need to have 
incapacitated allies. I personally don't use it that much, but if, uh, if that's something that you'd like to do, then by all means go ahead and do that. Aegean has plenty of evasion, uh, definitely the most evasion out of the two tanks available in the game. And uh, yeah, so like I said earlier, if you switch him in, then he's also going to launch the enemies. Uh, I'll level it up later, so don't worry. Now, going over to the uh, the affinity chart, it's exactly the same passives. The only thing that has changed is the specials, but we'll quickly look at this. Serene Heart is very, very valuable because I've given Aegean and Bridget more block rate to help mitigate uh, Hugo's incoming damage as easily as we can. Once you have this max out affinity, and because of the way that Torn of the Golden Country works, you're going to be canceling fairly often, meaning that you can build affinity extremely extremely quickly, so essentially Serene Heart could work as sort of a, uh, a pseudo-invincibility cooldown, as it were. It's a good 18 seconds, Be feel free to make use of them. And Like Water improves your evasion while you're moving. This isn't especially useful against super bosses, but in regular encounters, if you're constantly scrambling to revive people, this may come in handy. And the Enlightenment also increases your evasion when your HP is low. If you're playing as Hugo, he does enjoy the effects of Enlightenment while he's out. So when you're doing your Imperial Tether, you will find yourself in the threshold fairly often. Level 1, 2, and 3 specials, they're pretty simple. Level 1 special, I would recommend using the most, just because it increases damage to toppled enemies and hits multiple times. Roiling Tide, I'm not as big of a fan of. I'd rather that you kind of work your chain attacks to not use this one, because it only hits twice. And the 100 year wave, very, very good, because it has the aggro attack up. Um, damage effect. So yeah, that's exactly why we want to use that. The Oxos are pretty simple. I've given him max evade since having more evasion is always a good thing since you have a good block rate to go along with it. And then Elemental Orb Ender because that's exactly what we're going to try to play around with. We have a fire element in the form of Bridget, so having the opposite is going to work out just fine. I've also uh, also want to note that the opposite elements of Hugo will also be taken into account when Aegean is out, so if there's an electric orb out there, then we want to make sure Hugo can also look at that. Now, for the next blade is another familiar face, and it's going to be Bridget. Just so you guys know, the weapons that I've given to these characters, I've decided to actually go for broke on all these people's weapons. Everyone has gotten the really good stuff, so I've given the Moon Matter chip to... Uh, to Jin, I've given the Sunlight Chip to uh, to Haze, and then I've given another Moon Matter and the, the Sunlight Chip to these two characters as well. So yeah, everyone's gonna have their endgame stuff, and I just want to show how fun it is to farm the super bosses with this particular setup. But when it comes to Bridget in and of herself, she does come with a nice little break uh, when she switches in. It's not gonna be as useful since Laura is the most reliable one out there. But otherwise, though, again, like I said, all the specials in Xenoblade Chronicles 2 are now returning in art form. So yeah, that's exactly what I want to look at. But in particular, Confining Flames for Talents Arts is extremely useful. Again, she does have a lot of passives that benefit from having low HP, which I thought was kind of weird back in uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, because I figured that if you were the tank, you should be having as much HP as possible. But it turns out that it's going to be very well put to use here, and it boosts your allies' attack power, which is always welcome. In terms of the affinity charts, very similar to how it was in the past. Warpire is unfortunately not as useful just because the ability to dodge with an art is not available. So I guess mod I taught her that one, so that will not apply as reliably. Firewalker is also very useful. That's the same thing as the effect with Aegean. You want to make sure that Hugo will be evading the majority of the time. And then Dance of Flames, there's only one range attack of notes, and that's the Feather Vein of Pain. It's not the most useful out of all the abilities in the same way that um, Warpire isn't as useful as it used to be, but it is just nice to have that additional damage mitigation against the most dangerous attack in the game. The specials are pretty easy to look at, they all hit multiple times, but I think the one that's most important to note is Beltane Blade. This is definitely her best special, and one you definitely want to play around with in chain attacks, because it hits multiple times from the front, so that's the only prerequisite, and the majority of the time you will be standing in front of your enemies, assuming you're doing your job properly as the tank. In terms of the Ox Cores I've given her, I I was gonna give her, well, I did give her jamming just because I want to be able to reliably avoid the Feather Vein of Pain, which is a very common thing to get hit by. And I've also given her damage heal, which you get from Haze. Uh, the reason why I want to do this is because we still do have a decent block rate on our hands, and I want to make sure that Hugo can enjoy these benefits. 
So, I think that pretty much about does it for the entire party setup that we're running with today. We're going to be fighting Anise two times because I want to show you guys how easy it is to farm this particular super boss, despite the fact that it's considered the hardest at the moment. And in terms of the uh, pouch items I'm using, I'm using the Sea and Style Fry Up for more damage barrier and special damage, and Eternity Perfume because it's one of Hugo's favorite items and it gives you plenty of affinity to start with. This means that we can easily take advantage of a Geon's passive, which gives you invincibility for 18 seconds at the start of battle. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut the video and I'll take you to the demonstration. Alrighty, so here we are at the pedestal of stargazing, but before I begin the fight, I just wanted to point out that this particular fight is ironically a little trickier once you have higher um, trust rankings for your blades. Everyone is S uh, S5 and higher, so we are going to be seeing a noticeable increase in damage, not to mention that we've also given them the core chips. That being said though, all you really need to do is just build up as many orbs as you can. If you have two elemental orb ender ox cores applied, as I do, which is on Aegeon and Jin, you will be able to get by with only four orbs, and as long as you burst two orbs at the beginning, you will get the full burst with just the four. Otherwise though, the most reliable way to go about it is to have five or six, depending on how many elemental or ender ox cores you have. So let's go ahead and get this started. This is Hurricane Anise, very very annoying boss fight, but very much so farmable. Once you get around to this, you will be farming weapon points like no tomorrow. So essentially what I want to do, right when the thing begins, immediately auto attack cancel with an Imperial Tether. And then right before I switch out, I'm going to auto attack, auto attack cancel another one. Wait for that green smoke to appear before you cancel into the, uh, the switch out. Here we go. So that is the first special. Remember, we have an accessory that lets us kind of get our special builds up that much faster. And then quickly switch into Bridget for the Heat 2. Just like that, we have two orbs. I immediately want to go back into Hugo and then activate my Imperial Tether right when I begin and then go straight into Guard Shift for more of that safety. Okay, so the Heat is going to go turn into Wind 3. And I would love very, very much to... Um, to do with special, but Hurricane Anise is kind of far away right now. Okay, let's have them bolt then. Warning Cry came in, but that does not matter at all. We got ourselves the Volt, meaning that we're guaranteed to get a full burst with just these four orbs, which is perfect for us. Because remember, Aegeon's Ox Core does apply to Hugo. So here we go. The reason why I want to have two Wind Elements on Team Laura is just because I know that um, Jin has the Elemental Orb Ender, and that guarantees that we're going to stick around for one more Wind Element, just to get that, give ourselves that additional insurance. And just like that, we're going to use Team Hugo to finish this off. And what's going to happen here is that Jin's going to weaken it a little bit further, because Laura is not a Fire Element, which is absolutely fine. But we're just going to go ahead and switch to Minoth, and Minoth is going to get the full burst animation. And just like that, that is going to be a dead Hurricane Anise. Now, one other thing I also wanted to point out too is how much I really, really like that dynamic between uh, Hugo and his blades. Bridget and Aegeon had very similar personalities as they did to Xenoblade Chronicles 2. It's just that the context for their dynamic with their driver was very, very different. And that's kind of what I enjoyed the most about this DLC, is seeing familiar faces, but somehow still different, somehow still fresh. That's basically what this is in a nutshell. Okay, so these guys are left over. Really, even if there were multiple rogals, immediately what you want to do is just activate your Imperial Tether and then build up a level 1 special and then switch over to Bridget and do the level 2 so you get the Volcano. That's a good damage over time that I like to use a lot and it does really help out in the overall damage output. So again, auto attack cancel with the Imperial Tether. Wait for that green smoke to appear in order to get the proper effect. Before you switch out, there we go. And then immediately go into level 2 with a Geon. So, Water Moon, again, is the fastest one out of there. You want to make sure you can get as many cancels as you can without having to wait too long. And then once this is done, immediately switch back into Hugo. Alright, so this is going to be very, very scary. Remember, Guard Ship's extremely useful for healing ourselves. So here comes that Wind. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do an Earth Element this time. And I do not want to be around too long for that Warring Cry, because remember, once the Warring Cry activates, they're, they're going to summon the ads, and there's nothing we can do. So go Aegeon, immediately going to break. This is guaranteed two orbs, thanks to Aegeon and Jin. 
Another cool thing about the dynamic between Hugo and his blades is that when you do the level 4 special, they immediately... Uh, they, they kneel right before they give him the weapon. That's a really, really nice touch to show how much they have respect for Hugo. And again, like they also have that sort of fan club thing going on. For those of you guys that have seen the story, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So I guess, yeah. Uh, we'll have Mithra have her time to shine for this one. Why not? People love Mithra, don't they? I hope so. I also, uh, just kind of as a side note, I really like this variation of Mithra in comparison to her Xenoblade Chronicles 2 counterpart. Like, they are the same character, like, literally the same character, but it is just cool to see how much she develops in this game, turning her into the person she became in Xenoblade Chronicles 2, who, in my opinion, was not quite as exciting, but that's beside the point. Easily done, and there is still one more person. Remember, first thing you want to do, switch over to Hugo. As soon as you switch in Hugo, really just start spamming away for Imperial Tether till it activates, because that's going to grab everyone. And just like all, of, all the talent arts, you can auto-attack, cancel it, and build up that special. Really, really easy. Honestly, one of the most farmable bosses in recent memory. Like, I do assume that it's going to be a lot tougher when Bringer of Chaos happens, or in New Game Plus Bringer of Chaos even. But honestly though, that's part of what makes this so fun, is that I always loved playing as a tank in most of the MMOs I've ever played, but unfortunately I found that tanking was a little bit sluggish in this game, even though I desperately wanted to play as a tank. Thankfully, Hugo completely addresses any issues that I had with it, and I hope people feel the same. All the thought was put into these characters exceedingly well, whether it's for Laura being a good leader, or for Adam being an astute damage dealer. They all serve very, very well at whatever roles they have, and it makes me very excited to see like, just for an extra item, this extra DLC, I, it makes me really excited to see what they do for a, a non-DLC, a full game. But anyways, we are at the beginning of the end, you guys. There is going to be one more team showcase after this, and it's a very popular one. I'm actually going to kind of look into more of this stuff, because I know that the player base does have plenty of ideas about what to do with Adam. So I hope you guys look forward to that one. But until then, see you guys next time.